From everyday experience, we know that gas molecules behave differently than liquid and solid molecules. In order to understand the complex behavior of gas molecules, scientists came up with four major assumptions about the way ideal gases behave. And they call these assumptions the kinetic molecular theory. Now from a mathematical point of view, this isn't really a theory because under real conditions, these assumptions don't hold. Yet these assumptions are important to make because they allow us to come up with concrete conclusions about the behavior of gas molecules. So let's begin. The first assumption is the fact that volume of gas molecules is zero. So where does this assumption come from? Well, it comes from the observation that gases are easily compressed and mix very well. And this is because the distance between the molecules is much larger than the size of the molecules. Now let's look at our inflated ball. Within our ball we have lots of different molecules, but the distance between any two molecules is much greater than the size of the molecule itself. And that's why we can compress it, because when we compress it, there's lots of space for the molecules to move. On the contrary, on solids and liquids, the density is much higher, and so there's not too much space for them to move, and that's why we can't compress them easily. And that's exactly why when we take this inflated ball, we see that we can easily compress it, because there's lots of space for the molecules to move. But if this same ball was filled with solid or liquid, I would not be able to compress it without changing its shape or volume. Let's look at the second assumption. Gases move at high velocities in all different directions. So what's the observation or what's the experience from everyday life that tells us that gases in fact move at high velocities? Well, for example, if you forgot to wash your feet or you've been wearing your shoes for way too long, you know that if you take off your shoes and there's a girl or a boy sitting across the room, they will definitely smell you instantaneously. That's why you better keep your shoes on. That's because when you take off your shoes, the molecules of air trapped in your socks and in your shoes escape and move at very high speeds in all different directions. So the person sitting across the room from you will definitely smell you. So you better keep those shoes on. So the second assumption about high velocities also accounts for the fact that gases will expand into any container quickly and completely. Let's look at our third assumption. So, gas molecules exert no forces on one another due to mass and charge. From everyday experience, we know that if we take an object and drop it, it will fly down. Well, why does it fly down? Because the Earth, a much greater mass, pulls the object. And this object pulls the Earth as well. But the Earth is so large, it doesn't really move too much. And in fact, any two objects that have mass will exert a pulling force. Now the same way, charge also exerts a pulling and an attraction force. Now all these pulling and attraction forces can be neglected in a gas um, system. Well, this fifth part is not really an assumption. It's more of a conclusion. Now average kinetic energy of molecules is proportional to the temperature. And that simply means if we increase our temperature, we have more kinetic energy. And one observation regarding this assumption is that reactions occur quicker when our temperatures are higher. And that's because there are more collisions between any molecules. And so these uh, colliding molecules are allowed to react and so they create products. And that's why our rates are higher. Now, I want to mention one more thing. Now, recall that kinetic energy is equal to one-half mass times velocity squared. So suppose I have two molecules, one heavy molecule and one light molecule, with the same kinetic energy. Well, according to this formula, if the kinetic energies are the same, then the higher or the heavier molecule will have a lower velocity, while the lighter molecule will have a higher velocity. We could also talk about the average, the average velocities of the molecules. And that's simply the average of all the molecules 
found in our system. So on average, if you pull out a molecule from our system, it will have an average speed. So this fifth assumption directly goes into a concept called effusion and diffusion.